Okay, um, so in addition to make making queries, so in SQL we can also do some very simple uh, calculations. Uh, basically, so if you put any calculation after the select statement, and and then you can tell that um, so how do you want to save the result? So select and then you define the calculation and then use as a keyword statement. Say so you want to save that as a result. So that will be saved into a temporary column with the name that you define here. And remember that is temporary so that when you close your um, SQL editor, so the result will not be saved into the database. So if you do want to receive that database, you need to use uh, the other um, modification um, SQL statement. Okay, so here you can say I want to select uh, five multiple three as a result, and now I have the result column which has just one row, and the result is fifteen. Okay, uh, so normally we don't use SQL to do those kind of <laughs> calculations. So in most cases, we're using the SQL to do the calculations from the data. Okay, uh, so for example here, so if you remember that the, the house price that has a uh, house price table has a price column and also has has area column, but it does not have the unit price column. And in some cases we want to calculate the unit price, which is price divided by area. So we can do that one very simple in SQL. So in SQL, we can say we select price column, area column, which is optional. Uh, actually, you can just select this one only, but I just want to let you to see the both results. So I select both. And the third column will be the, re the value will be, uh, for each row, the value will be the value from the price column divided by the value in this area column. So that the result will be to this unit price column. Okay, and I call the result as unit price. And next I have to tell, okay, from which table? So from public house price table. And once I have this column and also I can treat that one as a real column in this, in this, uh, in this current query, although that is a tempor temporary column. Still, so I can still treat, use that one. So I see I want to order the result based on the unit price in this descending order. And now you can see that we have all the column that the first one will be the most expensive house in terms of unit price. Okay, so let's say that uh, in the uh, in our person in the editor. So here you can see if I want to have the price and also area from public house price. Okay, uh, so sometimes if you see this error, so that just means that um, uh, you open this um, query for a very long time and you didn't close that one, so there's no response. So the server just uh, close your connection. So what you can do, you can just run it again and you want to continue to reconnect. And now you see you have the result. Okay, so the best practice is that so every time when you are done with the queries, so you should close that query immediately. So that will release the connections to that database uh, and, and that will also uh, save the resources, save the, save the money for us. Okay, so here as say we have the price and also we have area. So if I want to calculate the unit price, so I say I want the unit price, that is price divided by area as, so I want to call it unit price. And I run it because I do now have the unit price and that is calculated. And if I want to sort that one, so order by price, 
and I want to use uh, ascending order. Okay, so you can see the cheapest one in terms of the uh, unit price is this one, and if I use descending, okay, and you can see that is the most expensive one. Okay, and also I said um, you you don't need to necessarily you don't need to select those two columns, so that just want to show you where are those price come from. So if you just delete those two columns and you just select one and that's also fine okay so you have the unit price so that is also fine and you can even sort that one based on the other column so if I say I want to sort that one based on the area okay and you can see unit price is not sorted based on the area although area is not in this view in is not in this output so that is also possible Okay, uh, so here let's talk about that how we can fill out the data. So by using select, you can define what column do you want to return. And by using the where clause, you can fill out the rows based on specific conditions. Okay, so basically the syntax is select the, the column you want from the table. And then after the where clause, you have to specify your condition. Okay. Uh, so we'll see some conditions later. So those conditions are very easy to, I think it's pretty and straightforward. So that's the where condition. The limit clause. So limit clause can limit that the number of the rows will be returned based on the query. So for example, uh, when you make a query, you may have the entire table which has thousands of rows, but you just want uh, a few of them. So here you can tap the limit. Okay, uh, so limit. So here I want the the first five results. So you can say limit five. It will give you the uh, the number of limit will be five. Uh, remember that the limit is always the last um, clause that in your SQL query. Okay. Uh, one special where condition that I want to highlight is called now. So remember, noun is a special type data. So it's like noun data that in Python. OK. Uh, so remember, in Python, if you want to check whether our data is noun, so we say, OK, is noun or not. Uh, in SQL, it's a similar. So if you want to check some data, is that uh, noun data or not, so we say is noun. OK, is noun or is not noun. So that is one special type of the where condition. I just want to highlight. Uh, for the other type of the where conditions, I think it it is pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, so here let's see one more example. So here we can say I want to select the student name and also major from my demo schema dot student table, and then I set where clause again. All the spaces will can be ignored, but I put that like this so it had, that will be easy. Uh, for us uh, to understand the query. So it's kind of the, the um, uh, my way that how I, I write SQL query because I know, okay, so then those parts will be the where clause. So you don't have to write like this, but I think that will be easier for you to understand the where clause. Okay, so where I want to say, okay, where I want to say the major equals I Okay, the major equals I and okay here I use another keyword and so that means this condition and this condition will both be met and the student name is not now. Now okay the student name is not now. Okay. And I just want to see the the only one result, so I say limit one. Okay, I just want to see a single result. So I say limit one. OK, uh, so let's see how that look like. OK, uh, so here I go back to the PG admin and I want select uh, everything from my schema dot student. So I just want to show you that how student table look like. OK, um, <laughs> another nice thing is that so when you have errors, so like you have errors in Python or SQL, 
don't be nervous, don't be afraid of seeing errors, and in most cases that those errors are pretty straightforward. So here you can see I have errors. That means that this table does not exist. Okay, relation of this table does not exist. So that's the way I got error. So I got error from the first line and specifically from after from. So you can see the reason is because I, I misspelled the student. Okay, so now if I type student, so here I have all the result. And following our example, so I want just to see the S name and also their major. So if I just like S name and student name and also major, so you can see now I'm only showing the student name, student name and also major. And now I can define my where clause. Okay, so you can write that in a single line if you like, but that is that will be hard to, to understand. Okay, major equals uh, because the value are character, so you have to use a single single quotation mark to tell to to tell the values. So the value will be i. Okay, and so now if I run it, you can see that only the i result has been returned. Okay, and I can also say and the student name is not now. OK, so that will give us the same result because all the names are not now. So if I run it again, you can see, OK, the same result. So if I say, OK, and the name is now. So in that case, because both records have do have values, so both records will not. So none of the records will match this query. So now if I run the query, I will see an empty query, but the query is still successfully executed, but it just returns the nothing. Okay, so I see not now. And lastly, let's say we want to limit the number of the records. So I limit, I just want the top one, so I just want CS1. Okay, and now I can see CS1. Now you can combine that one by using the sort by. Function so sort order by sorry order by s name ascending. You can see in that case you will see s one, but if you are using descending, and now you will see s two. Okay, so if you order by name and descending, you will see s two. OK, uh, so let's talk something more about how we can filter data. So more about the where clause. Uh, so in the where clause, uh, we can use the between statement. So that can select data in a range of values. So that it be called, that is like between the value between low and high. So the value that within that range will be retained. We can also use in statement. So that means that in statement will return the records that match any values in the list of values. Okay, so that's the value in and parentheses. Okay, and here you define a list of the values. So as long as the records, the value of the records uh, match any of those value in that list, so that record will be returned. Uh, we can also use the like statement. So like statement is kind of like filter data based on the pattern. Okay, so uh, if you remember that in in Python we talk about regular expression. Okay, so it's something like that, but uh, it is not that powerful like regular expression. Uh, so specifically like statement, you can use percentage to match any sequence of the character. Uh, so uh, so percentage will can stand for any sequence of the character, um, and score just for a single character. So a single character. So uh, it will look like this. So the string will like the pattern that you defined here. Okay. Uh, so the best way is that we we can see one example. So here I want um, see that okay the house price. 
the, the year that house being built, the number of bedrooms, and also the house types. Okay, so I want to see those three columns from the house price record in this public schema. And here I use three uh, clauses that together in this where clause. So I want to say first, I want the year house being built is between 2000 and 2020. Okay, so that is my number one uh, condition, criteria. Okay, so that here I use between, so the year that house being built between 2000 and 2020. And the bedroom should be, has either two bedrooms or have three bedrooms or have four bedrooms. So if that house have five bedrooms, that will not be a match. Okay, so that is my second condition. My third condition is that the house type will lack this pattern. So this pattern means that the house type will start with a letter C and also a percentage stand for any number of sequence of the characters. So after the C, you can have any number of the characters. So, okay, as long as you start with a C. Okay, so that is my third uh, condition. Okay. Okay, uh, so let's look at that example in uh, page admin. So I want to select. So first, let's say I want to select everything from the house price. Okay, you can see you have those columns. And in this example, I want to see the house that been built. And also the bedrooms. And also the house type. Okay, so now if I run it, so now you can say I just narrow down to those three types. Uh, you can see that some houses are built before 2000, and also some houses they have uh, five bedrooms. Okay, and as for the house family type, they can be single family, townhouse, or condo. Okay, so now let's say we want to use a where clause. Where Okay, I want to say that a house that built in between 2000 and 2020. Okay, and let's see what will happen. So now you can see you have all the house records that are built after 2000. Okay, and you can continue add more conditions. And I want those relationships to be end so that I want uh, they, they match both conditions. And, and the bedrooms, number of the bedrooms should be uh, premises, should be either have two bedrooms or three bedrooms or four bedrooms, okay? So that means this one, this one, this one, this one, this one will be filled out. Okay, so let's write. Okay, so now you can see I have the house that have two, three, or four bedrooms and also built in up 2000. And I want the house type. We all like, uh, again, that should be a string format. So that pattern should be string. It starts from C, so condom. And as long as it starts from C, and now if I run it, Okay, and you can see that only the condom will be uh, retained. So if I remove those other conditions, so if I remove the other conditions, and now if I run it, now you can see I, I selected all the condom, okay, in this case. And if I just keep this one, and also if I just keep this one, bedroom in two, three, four, Okay, and I just I will retain all the house record built in any years and also any house type, but have two or three or four records. Okay, so those are some very simple intro introduction at how we can fill out the data. So again, make sure you play those on your data set. And if you have any questions, and we can talk that one on Slack.